Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to have a look at one of the feature in Azure, which is Azure Functions. Azure Functions offers serverless computing uh, to the developers. It's a cloud service which is accessible on demand and offers all the resources and underlying infrastructure that is required for a developer to run his code. The function app contains execution context where the functions are hosted. So the function apps are defined in a logical group and then the compute resources is given in Azure infrastructure in the backend. Having talked about the summary of the function app, um, there are three types of offers at the moment um, that we are talking about this uh, given from the Microsoft in the Azure. So three types of plan. The first one is the consumption plan. Second one is the premium service plan. And, and the third one is the Azure app service plan. So it's always better to make some planning and have a look at uh, our current requirement to see which plan is suiting the best in your scenario. So it's always better to choose a plan based on uh, how we, your uh, application is going to scale in the future and what is the computing resources and the intensity of, uh, of the uh, application uh, that is going to be dependent on the compute resources. And also just in case if there is any complex network requirement, it is also uh, mandatory to have a look at them because uh, uh, based on that, you can choose the right service plan. Coming to talk about the uh, uh, plans, the first one is the consumption plan. The consumption plan is the one which comes by default uh, when you create a, a, a function app without choosing anything. So uh, this is like uh, the first serverless application uh, plan uh, which is, is being given when you create a, a function app. So uh, this plan will provide the automatic scaling and also builds you only when your functions are running. So it's a most cost-effective uh, plan. And consumption plan uh, comes with a configurable, configurable timeout uh, period for executing a function. By default, the configurable timeout is five minutes, but you can configure and have a timeout more than not more than ten minutes. So it um, it is limited between five to ten minutes. So uh, just in case if your application is uh, triggering and it's able to execute its uh, job within this time period, then this consumption plan is the best one. Um, and the benefits of this is like you're going to pay only when your function apps is running and it scales automatically even during the periods of high load. Uh, but the negative part is yes, uh, this can run only for up to, uh, in reality it can run only up to five to uh, 10 minutes. So if, if your uh, service or the application is going to uh, trigger a job which is uh, going to run more than 10 minutes, then uh, the default consumption plan is, is not the right choice for you. And we're coming to talk about the next plan, which is the premium service plan. The premium service plan is also uh, a better one, which automatically scales based on the demand uh, and it uses uh, component called pre-warmed workers. So with this pre-warmed workers, it would be able to, uh, it would be able to automatically scale better than the default consumption plan. That's the main difference. And then that will help uh, the application to run with no delay. And there is no idle times uh, when uh, your application demands extra computing resource. Uh, it runs on the powerful instance. And that's the main reason uh, you see this difference. Um, and the last benefit is it has the capability to connect to the virtual networks. So uh, we'll come in to talk about the positive of this premium service plan. Uh, this function runs continuously or it can run even nearly continuously. And uh, when you, your application needs a high number of uh, uh, small executions, like for example, you're uh, running like 100 uh, small executions or more than uh, like, uh, I really don't have the number right now, but if you have a high number of small executions, um, which is low in GB in seconds, then this is the right consumption plan. And uh, 
just in case if you need more CPU or memory options, yeah, this is also a, a good option to choose the premium service plan. And the main benefit is if your code needs to run longer than the maximum execution time, what we saw in the uh, default construction plan, this is the best option to go with. And also the main benefit is like uh, the virtual network connectivity. If your function app requires the virtual network connectivity, then you need to choose the premium service plan. And the last but not the least, the one of the major benefits is like if you want to provide a custom Linux image to run your function, then you have to go only with the premium service plan. And the last option what we have is the Azure App Service Plan. The Azure App Service Plan enables you to avoid timeout periods by having your function run continuously on a VM that you define. So this is like more or less not a service serverless plan because it's your function is basically going to run on a VM which is hosted on Azure. It may be a better choice if your function are used continuously or if your functions require more processing power or longer execution time than the construction plan can provide. Uh, for, for instance, even if durable functions, there's another function called durable functions, which we're not going to see in this video. Uh, even if uh, something that's not uh, possible with the durable functions, then the only option to go is with the uh, Azure App Service plan. Um, yeah, the main benefit is, uh, let's say, for example, if we have a, a lot of VMs which is running in the Azure, which is underutilized, uh, and they are running just one or two applications, then you can think of using that VM for this uh, uh, App Service plan. Um, yeah, and also, uh, if you want to do some predictive scaling based on your application, then uh, this app service plan is the best way to go. Uh, well, coming to talk about uh, when we talked about all the type of service plan, uh, the good thing is all these hosting plans are generally available on both Linux and Windows virtual machines. So you can choose based on your uh, platform. And uh, yes, so this is the type of the function app that we uh, uh, choose. And the last but not the least that what we need to talk about uh, uh, the next thing on the planning is the storage because when you create a function app, uh, it must be basically linked to the storage account uh, because uh, whatever the function app that you are using, uh, it stores, it uses the storage account for uh, two options, uh, like one for the logging function, uh, basically logging, um, uh, like uh, storing the logs, whatever your function is executing and also managing the execution triggers. So like uh, uh, like how to manage the execution uh, of the trigger, whatever you have created in the function, that is also being used uh, in the function app. So um, if you are using a default construction plan, then this is where the function code and the configuration file are actually stored. So it's, it's, it's mandatory to choose what type of storage account, uh, even you can choose your existing storage account. So this is the two, uh, uh, main planning that you need to do before you are hosting your uh, function app. Uh, so in the next thing, what we are going to do is like uh, having talked about it, let's have a look at how to create a function app. Uh, you can see I already have open Azure portal uh, in the screen. It's the same process. I already have the function, function app portal uh, in my suggestion, the function uh, app, cast to the right subscription on the function app. Cool. Uh, for a, for instance, if you don't, the moment when you click on the, the function app, app uh, um, here you have the here there's an option to have a uh, function app, uh, which is uh, uh, which you can see in the screen. After I click on create, I just need to choose the connect subscription. The resource group uh, is going to be yeah my test resource group function app name. I'm going to give a function app uh, pilot. Function test. And uh, in our example, we are just going to follow one of the uh, example from Microsoft. So, as uh, Microsoft uh, Docs page suggests to use the code and just using the code and the runtime stack, it just asks to choose the Node.js and to see Node.js and leave the version region uh, and the operating system uh, by default. So, here is the plan what we talked a few minutes back. The plan type, you can just choose uh, serverless, functions premium, or app service. In our case, just we are going with the serverless because this is a demo. And I'm just clicking on review and create. We need to wait for a few minutes until it's completed. So still it's not created. I'm clicking on create.
the moment after it's created, uh, there is a way to check if your function is uh, uh, is available and running, which we will see in a few seconds, because still the deployment is progress in our case. You could also see in the back end, it creates the uh, 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 associated components, uh, the storage, the server forms, and everything. So these are all the, uh, the infrastructure underlying where your function will be running, which is automatically created, which we no need to uh, worry about uh, uh, doing uh, the manual work in the back end. So here it's created. I'm clicking on go to resource. After clicking on go to resource, I see the URL. Uh, so this is my function app URL. When I open it, it says your function app is up and running, uh, which is um, good. Uh, and it says, OK, your function app is running. There is no problem. Uh, so while coming to talk about how to create the functions, uh, you just need to go into the functions. And uh, one important type, like uh, the function, uh, what you're uh, like, uh, how you can utilize the functions because these functions are basically event driven which means then they need to run in response to an event uh, this type of event uh, that starts a function is called a trigger so like you need to trigger uh, some request so that uh, this functions can uh, start executing so it's like for example in a blob storage uh, uh, if when you add something into your blob storage or when it is updated your function can trigger or uh, for instance, like um, when you send any HTTP request to your function, it can start. Uh, and also uh, like, for example, uh, if you send something uh, like uh, through an event grid, uh, any event is coming from the event grid, yes, your function can start. So there are a lot of a uh, few things uh, uh, like uh, close, uh, like uh, five to eight types where your you can uh, trigger, uh, trigger an action so that your function will start. Uh, you can look into the Microsoft website. Um, yeah, so let's look at uh, uh, an example of how to uh, configure a function uh, with this exercise from the Microsoft, uh, which you're going to have a look at this um, in today's video. I'm just going uh, going back one step. I will post this link into the uh, uh, YouTube video so that you can also follow the same. So as I stated, yes, these are the event triggers where uh, you can utilize your function to uh, uh, trigger uh, to execute. Uh, you can have a look at this in the uh, in the URL which I'll be adding to this video. And uh, yeah, so uh, and the next thing is like a binding which you need to do. Um, basically, a binding is a way to connect the data and services to a function because a function, if in order to work, it needs a data and a service. So with the bindings, uh, uh, Azure function uses a method called bindings. And with the binding, it, it connects with data and service to a function. So bindings interact with various data sources, uh, which means you no need to have to write a code in your function to connect to data sources and manage the connection. Um, and as you see, like uh, Azure provides a large number of bindings to connect to different storage and messaging services. Okay. So having talked about this, um, let's have a look at um, one of the example of configuring a function with a binding trigger. So here we are going to use a method. Let's say if you want to write a new row to Azure stable storage when a new message appears in Azure queue storage. So which means like when you go into function, when you're going to create, a, if you want to create a new function, basically this is the function which I created, pilot function test. So when I open this pilot function test, there is something called function on the left side. You click on the function. It's loading. Uh, let's wait for a few seconds. Here you have an option to create. So the moment when you click on create, so here we need to use the type of the trigger what we're going to use so here um, like uh, in this example it is going to use the azure storage uh, trigger so that's what's azure queue storage so here i'm just going to use the option azure queue storage trigger 
and then click on create the moment when i click on create it, it is creating the required uh, things in the back end so probably we need to wait for a few more seconds or minutes yes it's created so the moment when it is created uh, you can just go to the code and test In the code and test, you see the, 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 the default uh, values that is being present. So uh, basically, it, it shows in uh, Node.js. You have an option to choose it in JSON and then uh, README uh, MD. So what we are going to do here is, in our example, we have to uh, use this option because it's basically, if you look at the JSON file, it is um, having a name order type is queue trigger. Yes, we selected the function as queue trigger. So I'm just copying this and uh, replacing this code. Yep, and clicking on save. The moment when I click on save, uh, I just need to uh, look into testing whether it is working fine. So whenever you add something to your code, there is also a way to test. So here I just come back to the uh, queue trigger. Here there is an option test and run. I'm just clicking on test and run. So in the test and run, I have an uh, option to give input and output. Uh, so in this example, they are just asking to give a name Azure um, for, for our testing. So I'm, I'm just going to do the same thing. Um, so basically, I just come in here and then putting so I have a problem with my keyboard. Uh, let me open my on screen keyboard okay so we need to use name azure so i am just going back Okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, this is the test, I'm clicking on run. The moment when I click on run, it says, okay, the HTTP response output is accepted. So which means like the, 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 the test, what we did is fine. So uh, there is no issues with this. Um, this is the way you can test uh, your uh, code in reality. Um, and uh, there is also an option to monitor your function. So basically you can just come back to uh, uh, the, the Azure functions. So here I'm just clicking on close and uh, going back to the queue trigger uh, and then the pilot function test. Um, in, in the pilot function test, uh, I can just go to application insights. Yeah, and the application insights, uh, basically we need to uh, uh, see how your function app is monitored. So in this application insights, uh, I can see number of failed request, server response time, server request and availability. So this is a very nice method to uh, have a look at my um, uh, function and see what are the failed requests and what is the server response time uh, so I can uh, imp improve them in the future. So this is one of the best way uh, uh, to monitor your uh, to your uh, functions and the application. There is also option to add a streaming log screen, so where you can just uh, uh, like use this below sample code and uh, add the streaming log screen, uh, so that you can just get a further uh, information on your code. And uh, having talked about this, let's go into the next example. What we see, uh, uh, what is uh, what is being shown in the uh, Microsoft website. So here you can add a logic to the function. So previously we used the queue, uh, we used the function uh, function type, which is uh, uh, message queue. And now we are, we are, we are going to use the uh, HTTP trigger uh, and, and test our example. So in this case, uh, we need to create a new function. So um, this is going to be HTTP trigger. So I'm just going back to the function, uh, application insights, uh, no, not application insights. Uh, going to the function app which we created and in the function app 
on the left side, you need to click on the functions. In the function, the first one what we created is a queue trigger. So now I'm going to create a HTTP trigger. So the HTTP trigger, I have selected this because you see in the description, a function that will be run whenever it receives a HTTP request. So just we are going to check that uh, in our examples by clicking on create. It's going to create HTTP trigger in a few, few seconds. So the moment after it's created, uh, you will also see the uh, few uh, uh, the, the default um, the default way how it is uh, showing in uh, the JavaScript and also in the uh, JSON method when when it is created. We'll see that. So here it's created. I'm just clicking on code and test. This is the HTTP trigger which we created. And I'm clicking on code and test. And in the code and test, you see when I select the index JS in the node JS, it shows in this example. And for example, when I click on the JSON format, it shows the same. So this is how it shows in this uh, example of Microsoft. Yes, it, it is perfectly fine. And there is also option to test the function as we saw the uh, the the Q type or the the Q type function what we created. The same way you can go and get the function URL uh, and then uh, make the test. Uh, that is also possible. Uh, it, it does the same job uh, when you go and get the function URL and uh, when you want to when you want to run the test, you can run. Uh, in, in our example, uh, because we need to uh, trigger uh, on second. Uh, Because um, you need to trigger something from uh, from the curl. I don't have it. Uh, so if if you want to test, then you can go and download the the curl uh, for the Windows utility. Uh, send the request, and then you would be able to see the HTTP response uh, content from here. Um, and um, the most important thing is, if you want to secure the HTTP triggers, yes, you, you need to go to the function keys and. Uh, uh, change and uh, secure the HTTP request by default. The value is hidden. Uh, there are three options which you can do. Like, uh, like you can uh, select the value to be for anonymous, or you can uh, select the value to be uh, for uh, uh, like to run on a, on on admin to use a master, and then also there is an option to uh, use uh, the API keys. To block so that unknown callers cannot use your function. So that's the uh, option you have it here, and then you can uh, create a new function key, uh, renew the key, and uh, uh, and uh, use your function for uh, in a secure way. And uh, the last option, what we are going to see here, is um, adding a business logic to the function. So here, um, what we are going to do is just uh, uh, copy this code. So in this example, what they have is like add a logic to the function if uh, um, if something okay uh, the, the example what they the, what they were explaining here is there is an escalator where they are monitoring it um, if the temperature is less than 23 it's less than 25 it's perfectly fine if temperature goes more than 25 it's warning and if it goes more than 50 it's uh, immediate attention so when you go through this microsoft document um, docs you will you will come to know about the example what they're talking so in this case um, this is the trigger what they are going to add um, the JavaScript. So, uh, like basically, when uh, you see if it is less than 25, okay, more than uh, uh, 25, caution, and more than 50, it's a danger. So, I'm just going to go to the HTTP trigger and then open the index index.js file uh, HTTP trigger to test. It is slow. Let's wait for a few more seconds. So index.js, I just replace this with the one which I copied. I'll make sure I have copied everything correctly. Yes. And then clicking on save. 
after you click on save uh, you can also test your business logic uh, just you go to uh, test run feature in the developer yes the moment when i click on test run what i need to do is um, in the input tab you have to replace the contents with the following code what they have so i'm just going this is the previous example what we used to test for the q trigger i'm just clicking on run yes uh, it, it has completed it successfully completed and in the output code you see 200 okay so which means our function has been uh, run successfully uh, which is good and uh, yeah so this is the way that you can uh, go ahead and use your function app to host your code uh, without uh, depending uh, without worrying on the backend underlying infrastructure Hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe more for videos like this. Thank you.